Hey there, AVS pros. Welcome to another how-to video. Today, we are going to explore a very popular feature within the NSX ecosystem, the distributed firewall. Security is a critical component of any infrastructure, and securing the network is an imperative for all organizations. The distributed firewall has been one of the primary reasons customers adopt VMware's NSX solution. So today, we are going to dive into how the distributed firewall works, how to configure it, and the many ways you can apply it to your infrastructure. To summarize the distributed firewall, you have to first understand how NSX works. NSX is embedded in the hypervisor on every ESXi host. Each host is a transport node, and they participate in an NSX environment called a transport zone. Since NSX runs within the hypervisor, it is distributed across your infrastructure. Configurations are centrally managed within the NSX management plane and pushed down to all the contributing nodes in the environment. This creates a simple solution managed centrally and distributes networking to make a robust and highly available solution. This benefit continues down to the security layer, which is the distributed firewall. We dive more broadly into NSX on another video we did, which we will link in the description below. In NSX, there are two places you can apply firewall rules. There is the distributed firewall and the gateway firewall. The gateway firewall is not as common as there are very few use cases for it within AVS due to its setup. Most customers will use the distributed firewall to apply firewall rules. As mentioned before, since NSX runs on every individual node, distributed firewall rules apply all the way down to the VM level. This means that instead of protecting applications from a subnet to subnet perspective, you can control network access all the way to VMs within a subnet. This is commonly referred to as micro-segmentation, where you are applying security at a micro level or per VM level. If you are an Azure user, this is similar, although not identical, to the concept of network security groups or NSGs for Azure VMs. Since we now understand where we can apply security, let's look at how we can do that. If you log into NSX and navigate to security, and then click on the distributed firewall under policy management, you'll see that there are different categories we can apply rules to. Ethernet, emergency, infrastructure, environment, and application. These sections are a way of organizing rules based on their purpose so that it's easier to find rules when you need to. There is also a way to search and filter. Rules are aggregated under a policy. When you create a policy, you can name it and then add a rule under that policy. Once we create a rule, we can give it a name and start defining a rule. In NSX, we support different ways to define source and destination for the rule. If you prefer the classic way of defining rules, you can simply type an IP address or a CIDR block. In this example, I'm going to block all traffic between two slash 27 CIDR blocks you see here. You could do this for scenarios like access between prod and dev or a DMC to all other virtual machines. Now I'm going to identify VMs on these two networks. So let's log into this Windows VM. And log into this Linux VM. Now I'm going to start continuous ping. While that is running, I'm going to go over to my rules that I created and block the traffic by moving the allow to drop. To apply this rule, I need to select publish. If I hop back over to my VM, we can now see that the traffic has stopped.
Now that we understand how to apply rules the classic way, let's take a look at how we can create dynamic groups. Groups are objects within NSX that can be created on a wide range of criteria. A common way to create a group is to add VMs in a group based on their name. For example, I have VMs in this environment with my last name. So if I use the criteria of VM name and contains and web, I get my virtual machines as a member of that group. The beauty of this is that this will pick up new virtual machines that get created. To demonstrate that, I'll head over and clone one of my virtual machines with a new name. Once the VM is booted up, we can navigate back over to my group, view the membership, and see that my VM is now part of this group. Now that I have a group, I can apply rules to that group through the distributed firewall. So now I will navigate to my rules and update them just like I did with the last set of rules. Let's talk about a couple of unique things to keep in mind when it comes to the DFW and AVS. If you have NSX on-prem, keep in mind that as of making this video, July of 2024, Federation is not supported. This means if you have rules that you created on-prem in NSX, you will need to recreate them in NSX. There is a robust API that could be leveraged to read and insert rules should you have the bench to create the code. If you want to have micro-segmentation between an on-prem NSX domain and an AVS NSX domain, you would need to define your rules based off of IP address. The other item that is commonly asked is if there is layer seven inspection. Azure VMware solution today comes with NSX that addresses inspection at layer four. You can add layer seven inspection to your environment should you choose to do that. You'll need to contact your sales rep for more information on procurement. The distributed firewall fundamentally changes the way you can secure your VMware environment. With attacks growing in size and number every day, organizations are looking for ways to create layers of security. NSX allows that to happen with the capability to micro-segment your environment like we saw in the demonstration in this video. Do you have a topic you think would be great to explore on this channel? Leave a comment below. We are always looking for suggestions. As always, have a great day.